So today I'm going to walk you through how I optimize a website. You can see here that I've already gone ahead and created a test site called videos.presstitan.rocks and the site loads in 7.4 seconds. It's only 1.63 megabytes big. That's actually kind of tiny for a modern site, but it requires 252 requests. You can see it has a page speed score of F and a Y slow score of E. That's not good. We're going to make it better. One of the biggest culprits of a slow website are plugins. As you can see here, we have 25 active plugins and that's nowhere near the most I've ever seen. I've seen sites with 60, even 80 plugins before and I've heard reports of people having over 100 plugins installed and active on their WordPress blog. These days I try to keep it under 10, 10 or less is usually a pretty good number. And one of the ways that I figure out whether a plugin really kind of needs to go or can stay if I'm trying to optimize for speed is based around third-party APIs. If it needs to put a bunch of JavaScript in my site, it needs to pull something from a third-party site. If there's an API connecting externally to someone else, usually I have to go ahead and deactivate that plugin. We're going to take a look at that now. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is an add to any plugin, a Kismet, Breeze, Broken Link Checker, Classic Editor, Contact Form. None of these plugins should really be out of the ordinary. You've probably seen a lot of them before. Some of them are a little new, like Gutenberg, but it's becoming more and more common to see it. We have Jetpack, Insert Headers and Footers, Redirection, you name it. Pretty much the most popular things, they're here. So how do you know if they're bad? Well. Let's take a look at some of these, right? Let's start from the top. Add to any share buttons. Add to any requires probably a third party API. So let's go ahead and deactivate that. That means we won't have those share buttons that it provides, but Jetpack actually provides share buttons as well. And there are also more lightweight ways to do share buttons. Also, a side note, share buttons aren't very popular anymore. People don't really click on them. Sorry, you're kind of wasting speed on your site to have them in place. We'll go through that later though. Akismet anti-spam. It does require a third-party API, but it really should only affect speed when you're actually having someone submit a comment. Breeze. Breeze is a caching system, and we're not really using it on this site yet, but we'll get back to caching later. Broken link checker. Plugins like this are very bad. You want to get rid of these, because what they do is they scan your entire site to see if there's broken links, and that can really slow down your server. So let's, get, let's turn that off. Classic Editor can stay on, Contact Form 7. I prefer Gravity Forms, but we'll go back to that later. Page Builder stuff we're all going to leave on right now. The new cookie consent for the, the EU GDPR law we'll leave on. Google Fonts for WordPress. You want your fonts to be local. You want your fonts to be on your hosting server. As fast as the Google API is, as fast as all these third-party services are, you really want to keep things on your server if you can, because that helps with CDNs and caching. And we're going to get to all that later. So we're going to deactivate that for now. Who needs fancy fonts? We can, we can deal with that differently. Gutenberg we're going to leave on. Insert headers and footers we're going to leave on for now. I'll explain why later. Jetpack we're going to leave on for now, but we'll probably turn it off later because it's kind of a slow poke. More add-ons, max mega menu. We're not even using this on the site. So we're going to go ahead and deactivate that. Huge tip. Huge tip for anyone out there. If you have a plugin and you're probably not using it, deactivate it. It could be in adding a whole bunch of JavaScript and CSS to your site that you're not even taking advantage of. So look out for things like that. Redirection. Huge pet peeve of mine. You have probably access to an HT access file. That's where your redirects should be done. They should not be done using a plugin in WordPress. You know how slow this is? It's got to go check the database and it's got to see, okay, is that redirect, does that redirect exist? It's, it's really a nightmare. Please don't use this redirection plugin. Don't use any of these redirection plugins. Use your HD access file. If you don't understand how to do it, ask your web host to help you. More widgets, okay, WordPress importer. We've already used that to add in all the, our test content, so I'm going to disable that. It's not like it's providing a huge um, speed decrease, but we're going to get rid of it for now. Uh, WordPress popular posts, again, these kinds of things are very slow. I don't recommend them. They have their place and they can be useful. And if you need it, go ahead and activate it. But we're going to disable it for now. We're just going to do like 
All we're gonna do is, is disable a bunch of plugins and we're gonna do another GT metrics report and see what our speed is like. WP statistics. Any stats plugin you have is a mistake if it tracks directly on your server. Now, this is a broad statement. Of course there are exceptions. Of course there are. This is not one of them. Bye bye WP statistics. WP post views, do you really need to know if one post has seven or eight views? No, get rid of that, very slow. Auto linker, again, any plugin that requires your WordPress blog or database or whatever to do a bunch of different searches, that's no good, auto linker's gotta go. WPMU dashboard, we're gonna get back to that later. I'm gonna be using some image compression plugins and that gives me access to that. Yoast SEO, we're gonna leave that as well. So as you can see, we are down to 15 active plugins, 10 inactive plugins. I'm just gonna make sure there's no cache as we do our test. We're gonna open up a new GT metrics. And let's see what kind of difference we get. 6.2, that's still better than the 7.4, right? We've made some progress here. We've cut a whole second from it. So let's, let's do one more. We're gonna go ahead and disable Jetpack for WordPress. What do you think? Will it be much faster? Automatic always talks about how fast Jetpack is. And, well, we just lost another couple of seconds there. So we're down to 3.2 seconds. That's pretty good. We had to give up some features, which is not so great. But we've made some progress here. The next plugin we're going to look at is Insert Headers and Footers. These kinds of plugins are fairly popular. Sometimes they're built right into your theme, but sometimes they won't be. You're gonna wanna go ahead and check for something like insert headers and footers. You're gonna wanna see how many scripts are in here. You can see right now we only really have one-ish, and that's a, a stats tracking script. We're gonna go ahead and actually disable that plugin for now. Yes, stats tracking is important. Yes, it's nice to have that information. Is this plugin really bad? No, but we're trying to really optimize for speed right now. We want this site to go as fast as possible, so we're looking for those opportunities to make it faster. Now that's one less third-party script that we have on our site. Let's see if that changes our speed at all. 3.2 seconds. We're getting there. We're getting there. You can see some of the big issues. I, I love GT metrics for this reason. Some of the big issues we have is we need to optimize some images. We need to defer par parsing of JavaScript. We need to minify JavaScript. Look at all this JavaScript still, my goodness. You can see here we have stuff for Elementor in there. So let's let's go ahead and, and remove Elementor from the mix. We have eight active plugins. Ideally, you want your website to load in under three seconds. Two seconds is even better. And anything two seconds or below is pretty darn fast and feels pretty snappy for users. We're now at 2.9 seconds, and we're not done. We haven't optimized images yet, and that's what we're gonna do next. So I've gone ahead and activated Smush Pro. Arguably one of the better image optimization plugins. You should really optimize your images before you upload them to your blog. But let's say you're like me and you just wanna upload images and not worry about that. Well, plugins like this allow you to go ahead and compress images. And as you can see, even from our latest thing, right, we have optimized images F, so we gotta do better at this. There are different ways of doing this. This tool is one of them, and it's one that I enjoy, and hopefully we can get some results out of it. It might take a little while, because while there's only 46 images that it needs to optimize, it has to do it for every size of that image. So if you have thumbnail, medium size, large size, all these things, I also have it set to go ahead and um, smush our original full-size images and make a copy of them first so that I never lose the high-quality image on my server. Hard drive space on servers is cheap. So let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens, and I will be right back. So we've gone ahead and smushed the images. We saved almost two megabytes from just super smushing, and we saved another three megabytes from image resizing. As you can see in my settings, I set the max width and height to basically a normal HD monitor. You can do that or not, it's really up to you. I went ahead and ran a GT metrics report, and as you can see, we didn't really save any page loading time, and I'll explain why. 
There weren't a lot of images on the homepage that needed optimization, and that optimization didn't give us a huge amount of time savings when loading the page. There were still just as many objects to pull from the server, and so there's also a variance. A server doesn't respond necessarily at the same speed every time. You can see here though, we saved a little bit of total page size, and our page speed score jumped from 77 to 94. That's pretty good. So let's look at what else we can do here. Leverage browser caching. So you can see here, the fave icon doesn't have an expiration. That's something we can change in our server settings. We also have this thing here that says Twitter. Now let's go over to the website. And what you're going to see is that in one of the test posts, let's scroll down here, there's this here, a Twitter embed. Hmm. Well, I'm actually not a huge fan of Twitter embeds. The reason being, someone can delete the tweet. It um, doesn't always look right, depending on your theme. And again, you're pulling from a third-party API, and that requires this stuff here. So let's edit this post. We don't necessarily want to lose this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna take this tool right here, snipping tool, actually gonna grab an image of this we're gonna get rid of that status we're gonna get rid of this text too because it doesn't really matter we're gonna upload that file let's see there it is we're gonna insert that into the post and we're gonna update it and you might think that's a little crazy but watch this right That post now, with the Twitter embed, is using an image. Now that image is a little small, let's fix that. Bad WordPress. Well, bad me, really. Uh, we want the full size, insert, update. Now the question is, is this image smaller than that third party embed? I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna find out. So we're gonna retest right now. 2.8 seconds. So again, we're improving. Our Y slow score is going up. Our page speed score is going up. Our number of requests are going down. Defer parsing of JavaScript. What do we got here? Whole bunch of stuff. Inline small JavaScript. Interesting. Browser caching, we know. Minify CSS, we know. Minify JavaScript. So. We're getting to the point where there's not a lot of things that we can easily change here. So the next thing we're going to do is minification. What the heck is minification? Well, in your posts and pages, so let's go ahead and view the website. And if we view the source code of the website, you're gonna see that things are broken up into their own individual lines. It's very easy to read and isn't that so nice, but all that white space, believe it or not, it actually adds up to a little bit of extra data. So let's go ahead and, and get rid of that. So we're gonna do HTML, CSS, uh, minification. We're gonna include the inline stuff and we're gonna click save changes. We're gonna go into advanced options. We're actually gonna group those files too and save changes. Now I didn't do that with JavaScript for a couple of reasons. JavaScript doesn't necessarily always work well when minified and JavaScript often won't work well when you group it into a single file. And the reason is it has a pecking order, a loading order. But if you don't do it right, it breaks everything. I recommend trying out different options in here to see if you can get it to work the way that you want it to. Um, just be very careful. We're gonna go ahead and minify JavaScript for now. It might break something, but we're gonna give it a try. So let's purge the cache. Let's load the front page. And I think if we view the source again, yeah, it's going to show us, because we're logged in, it's gonna show us the non-cached version. So if we open an incognito window and go back to the site and we view the page source, you'll see that all that white space has been taken out. It's very difficult to read now, but it has been changed so that it is a little bit smaller. And so if we run another performance test here, we're trying to beat 2.8 seconds. 
We're down to 2.3 seconds. That's not too bad. We can do better though. We can do a little bit better. So one of the things that we're not doing right now is more aggressive caching, CDNs, um, tools like that. Uh, I recommend Cloudflare for if you want something free. There's also CDN 77, there's Bunny CDN. There's a whole bunch of great resources for CDNs and I highly recommend you spend time on doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and make some other optimization tweaks and we're gonna come back after that. And so after a few more tweaks, mostly to the CDN settings, uh, minification settings, uh, combination settings, we have a site that went from loading in 7.4 seconds down to 2.3, 2.7, somewhere in there, all the way down to 1.4. And sometimes it's loading in under a second, like one second. It's pretty crazy. Um, you can see we have a page speed score of 100 and a Y slow score of 91, which is far improved versus our 46.55 that we had at the start. There are a lot of opportunities to increase the speed of your website. Don't give up. Go ahead and try out some different plugins and different tools. Create a staging site and see what you can really get away with disabling. There are lots of opportunities out there. Do not, please never allow yourself to get stuck with a website that loads in five or more seconds. Like there's something wrong there, something that can be improved. And I hope you learned something from all of this. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much.